SLI and Crossfire aren't technologies I often touch on as they don't interest me that much. More importantly, the evidence would suggest most gamers aren't that interested either, with very few choosing to run more than one GPU, though granted the pricing is likely the ultimate issue here. My reasons for disliking SLI and Crossfire are simple. In my experience, it just isn't a practical means of accessing extra performance. I'm not saying either technology is bad, but it should be reserved for the most extreme GPUs available at the time. Software support plays a major role here and quite a bit of work needs to be done by both the game developer and Nvidia to allow their multi-GPU technology to scale well. Sadly, this doesn't always happen and gamers are often left with less than desirable performance. It's not like SLI is a new technology either. In fact, scalable link interface technology was first developed by 3DFX back in 1998 when it was introduced with the Voodoo 2. I might add, this was before I got into PC gaming too, but I was 10 years old, so I feel like I can be excused. Apparently back then, scaling was limited by CPU performance, and it wasn't until later in 2004, after Nvidia acquired 3D effects, that they introduced SLI with their GeForce 6 series with a greater degree of success. Since then, SLI hasn't changed a great deal. The GeForce 8 series enables scaling beyond just two cards, and that's remained a feature right up to the GeForce 9 series. Now, the recently released GeForce 10 series saw a few changes made to SLI, the most noteworthy of which is the new SLI bridge, which uses both SLI connectors or fingers to connect just two cards. This has been done to increase the available bandwidth between the two graphics cards. By using both connectors, the new SLI interface runs at 650MHz, a massive 63% frequency bump over the old 400MHz bridges. Because both connectors are now required to efficiently connect two GeForce 10 series graphics cards, this takes three-way and four-way support off the table. There's been a huge amount of confusion about this topic, but in short, only two-way SLI is now officially supported, and frankly, I think that's a good thing. Full disclaimer though, it is possible to link more than two GeForce 10 graphics cards together using legacy SLI bridges. But other than showing how much money you can dump on your rig, there really isn't much point. Nvidia's game ready drivers will include 3 and 4 way SLI profiles for select benchmarking applications such as Firestrike, Unigen and Catzilla. This of course will allow Nvidia's name to remain high on the benchmarking charts. As for games though, we really only expect to see 2 way support. So then, you've decided to bite the bullet and get yourself a pair of GTX 1080 graphics cards. You've worked hard and you deserve it. The only question now is do you shell out another $40 for the high bandwidth SLI bridge or do you stick with the one that came with your motherboard? Having spent $1400 on 1080 graphics cards already, what's another $40? Still, it would be nice to know if that fancy looking bridge does anything more than just look, well, fancy. That's what I plan to find out today as I stick a pair of GDX 1080 and GDX 980 Ti graphics cards together using the new SLI bridge and comparing it to the old single connector flex bridge I got for free with the Z170 motherboard. Okay, so for testing, my standard GPU testing machine has been used and the latest game ready drivers were used to test both the GDX 980 Ti and GDX 1080 configurations. I'll be focusing on 4K performance as this high resolution should push the bandwidth across that SLI bridge. The results are extremely interesting, surprising, and perhaps even a bit confusing. But before we get to that, let's start with what I was expecting to see. First up, we have Armour 3, a game that plays well below 60fps on a single 1080 when using the high in-game quality settings. Adding a second 1080 boosts performance by an impressive 74% with the old flex bridge. Using that new high bandwidth bridge pushes that figure up to 79%, though I should point out it was just 2fps. This is pretty much on the margin of error for testing, even with a 3 run average. Honestly, this is more or less the kind of performance I was expecting to find. Here we have another super demanding game in Crisis 3, and while adding a second 1080 allowed for a 71% performance boost, using the high bandwidth bridge didn't improve that figure. Dirt Rally only sees a 65% performance boost when enabling SLI in the GDX 1080 cards at 4K, but to be fair, that sees even the minimum frame rate stay above 100 FPS. Using the high bandwidth bridge has no impact on performance here. The 980Ti SLI cards provided 69% more performance in Star Wars Battlefront. Meanwhile, GDX 1080 SLI scaled even better, providing 88% more performance using the flex bridge. The high bandwidth bridge allowed almost perfect scaling at 96%, which was impressive to see. If I was ever going to see a reasonable gain using the new high bandwidth bridge, I expected to see it in Far Cry Primal. As it turns out, SLI scaling for the 1080s is pretty good here. We see a 76% performance boost while the high bandwidth bridge isn't able to improve performance further. Rise of the Tomb Raider was another game that I thought might show a real benefit from having more SLI bandwidth. Despite only seeing a 66% increase in performance when adding a second GDX 1080, the high bandwidth bridge only increased that margin by 5% for an extra 3 FPS. 
Better than nothing, I guess. Here we see SLI scales superbly well in Call of Duty Black Ops 3, as we go from an average of 58 FPS with a single GDX 1080 to 104 FPS using the Flex Bridge. This is a nice 79% improvement. Despite that great result, we see the high bandwidth bridge is able to improve performance even further, resulting in a 91% performance gain over the single card configuration. This is great stuff and more than what I was hoping to find. Okay, so this is where things get interesting. Using the Flex Bridge, the GTX 1080s provide just 23% more performance over a single card, so pretty abysmal scaling. This is pretty much what we've come to expect in The Witcher 3 though. Using these quality settings, the 980 Ti SLI cards were just 35% faster than their single card configuration. Using the high bandwidth bridge does nothing to help the GDX 980 Ti graphics cards, but it works wonders for the 1080s. Here we see a massive 26% performance gain over the flex bridge for an average of 67 FPS, 56% more performance than a single 1080. Still far from the best scaling we've seen, but a massive improvement over using a legacy SLI bridge connector. If you lower the quality settings to say medium, SLI scaling picks up considerably in The Witcher 3 with the flex connector, so this does indeed suggest that the poor scaling is a result of limited bandwidth between the cards. Tom Clancy's The Division has more interesting results for us. Here we see a huge 33% performance gain when using the high bandwidth SLI bridge over the flex bridge. Here the flex bridge allowed the SLI 1080s to deliver just 13% more performance, while the high bandwidth bridge allows for a 51% performance boost. Again, not the best SLI scaling you're going to see, but a vast improvement nonetheless. With the high bandwidth bridge, GPU utilization increased by over 30%. With the flex bridge, we saw just 60% utilization on the GPUs, while near 100% usage was seen with the high bandwidth bridge. Something worth noting here is that the high bandwidth bridge also boosted the performance of the GDX 980 Ti graphics cards, providing an 11% performance boost. Granted, that isn't nearly as significant as what was seen with the 1080 graphics cards, but to my knowledge, the high bandwidth bridge is isn't meant to help the Maxwell GPUs in SLI. One game that constantly throws up unusual results is Fallout 4, and keeping with tradition, it has the most extreme legacy versus high bandwidth SLI bridge results yet. Fallout 4 is a bandwidth pig, but a 42% performance gain when going from the legacy to the high bandwidth bridge is massive. This means while SLI had only scaled by 20% previously, it's now showing a 71% performance improvement with the high bandwidth bridge over a single 1080 card configuration. Unfortunately, the high bandwidth bridge doesn't help the Maxwell based GDX 980 Ti graphics cards. Okay, so the mission here was to try and determine if there's a tangible difference between the legacy bridge that you probably got for free with your motherboard and the expensive 40 US dollar high bandwidth bridge that Nvidia claims you now need. Also, while I do plan to run the SLI 1080s and eventually 1070s through my 20 plus game gauntlet, that wasn't required for this video. Instead, the 10 game sample painted a rather interesting picture. Of course, of the 10 games tested, the high bandwidth bridge only showed noteworthy gains in just three of them. That said, we essentially went from a situation where SLI was almost broken to one where it was scaling at over 50%, and that extra performance was very welcomed at 4K. I have to admit, I was a bit hesitant to publish these results at first. I wasn't convinced there wasn't something unforeseen influencing the results. But after countless back and forth between the flex bridge and the high bandwidth bridge, the results were confirmed, reconfirmed, reconfirmed again, and a few more times before I accepted what the test system was giving me. With nothing else being changed here, the performance difference had to be coming from the SLI bridge. Some users have been reporting performance gains when using two single bridges with their 1080 SLI setup. To my knowledge, this caused issues with the Maxwell based cards, but I decided to give it a shot after completing all the testing previously. To my surprise, with the two flex connectors installed, I received the exact same performance boost in The Witcher 3, Division, and Fallout 4 as I did with the high bandwidth bridge. So it seems if you have two legacy connectors, you don't actually need a high bandwidth bridge. Surprisingly, despite others running GDX 1080 SLI tests, no one else seems to have compared the high bandwidth bridge with the legacy bridge. If someone can confirm or contradict my results, please drop a comment below. Thanks for joining me again at Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.